it's fine. I'll do it. I know. Yeah, I, I know. I'm sure flight sim is an amazing thing. I know it's gonna be. I know it's. I know it's worth selling even the the mammoth ticket. The show must go on, so I, I you know, I'll, I'll do the video this week. No, I insist, I'll do the video this week. And uh, your D90, I'm sure, will be along. Oh, hi, sorry, everyone, it's um, just Terry on the phone. Um, Terry won't be joining us this week, but there are a few important things I want to talk about and, and sh talk a little bit more about, perhaps, than I did last time. Um, so, first of all, what's changed? Well, I've got bumpers on front and back. So we're going to have a good look at those and I'm going to go through what, what they are in detail. I'll put some screenshots up from eBay and so on. I'm getting a lot of questions about bumpers, not just on this, but on the Comanche uh, and, and so on. It just seems to have been bumper week last week. <laughs> a bumper, bumper week. So yeah, so I've got bumpers to show you. I've also finished the exhaust and uh, prior to obviously weathering and so on. I've also put another coat of mat on the, tr on, on the cab. I can't remember whether I'd lacquered it at all last time, but it has now had a couple of coats of matte lacquer on here so that it is a little darker and I think, I hope you can you can agree that it is perhaps a little bit more kind of toned in to the cab, which is still satin, so this needs to be finalised and they can balance, maybe balance up a little bit better, even, 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 uh, even more, even better -er than they are now. Anyway, and you're probably wondering why I'm wearing a silly hat. Well, I'm wearing a silly hat because my house has no heating uh, at the moment, and it is now officially autumn, and I'm riding home from work in the dark. So it is autumn. It is quite cold in the house tonight. So I've got the layer up and, and so on. So, the Unimog. What's going on with it? Well, first thing, obviously, you'll notice are the windows. Now, the windows are... Uh, masked off. There is no interior in here. I've taken the interior out again. Two reasons. One, I, I'm, I'm due to lack of the cab, as I say, but I haven't done so yet. And the problem with I've got at the moment is I'm, I'm waiting for some stickers to arrive. I have ordered some time ago now. I did order from a UK seller as well, I might add. Um, they probably arrived from China quicker than this. Some Red Cross stickers. So when they come, I'm going to have a look, and I just want to make sure, make up my mind as to what I'm going to put on this um, sticker-wise. So I think it's got to have at least one red cross sticker on each side, right? Um, the cab, in keeping with the theme uh, that the box doesn't really belong with the cab, uh, the cab won't have any red cross stickers on it, I don't think. So I've got to sort something else out for that. But you never know. I'm not sure exactly what's on the sheet, so I'm going to, I'm going to see. But the, the, the box certainly is going to have some um, red cross stickers on it to go with the blue lights, which I, it also will have. So that's that's what I'm kind of waiting for in the, in the overall scheme of things. I could have progressed the shell a little further had the stickers arrived. Once the stickers go on, obviously they'll be thick and they'll be glossy. Then I can lacquer over the top and blend them in, mat them down and kind of get them settled uh, under the lacquer. And it'll all kind of work a little bit better. If you just put stickers straight on the top and then start weathering them or something, they they they'll not they'll not react as well. They don't take the uh, any additional paint as well. They they're thick and glossy, you know, so not going to work. Now, otherwise, I have um, sorted the roof rack out. The other reason the interior came out of the truck was to put the roof rack bolts in. So the roof rack's in the kitchen. It has been primed and sprayed black, so it is going to sit on here. It does sit on here. I've got spaces organised, and I've drilled the holes in the cab roof. So I can get in and you know bolt them in and, and bolt it on. So once the lack is done, the roof rack will go on, the interior will go back in. To the bumpers then, as I say, that's the main the main part of this that I want to talk about tonight. Um, the front I have decided, as I said, I have decided that I'm going to stick with uh, the metal bumper. I'm not going to bother putting the uh, kit bumper on, mainly because it's got lights in it and it's going to take a lot of faffing around to uh, take the lights in and out. All right, so the bumper that you that we can see on here now is, again, it came from eBay, so I, I will put a link on, but it's a fairly generic eBay. It's hard to point you at the right, exactly the right one for this, but you can see what it looks like. It's got the whole rail thing on it and a couple little kind of grilled thing here. It is very similar to the one that was on the Comanche police interceptor. Sometimes I take the grill off, but the, the Probably the last time you saw the interceptor, the, the Comanche on uh, on video, 
it didn't have these side bars on these do come off, it all screws into the bumper and these are on a, like a grub screw, big grub screw in there you can unscrew them and um, put a proper screw in and that's that but I particularly like this one. It was the first one I bought and I was prepared to send it back and get another one. But I quite, this one seems to fit perfectly well. What I particularly wanted was one with the lights in the same place as a MOG bumper would have. And so it kind of has a, kind of still has that look about it when you, you've seen head on with the lights on. It also has a big winch bucket in here. To, to I'm going to put a winch in there. Probably borrow the one out of the 10.2. The, the, uh, Put that in there. It's a bit dead winch. It won't work, but uh, it will. Uh, it will complete the look. I think certainly explain the big beefy bumper. It does rattle a little bit, so I'm going to have to have another look at that. I think that's in the mounts. Uh, in uh, they think the the steel pins that go into the TRX uh, bumper mount are a little bit too uh, thin, so they rattle about a little bit in the in the bumper mounting, which. I don't really like that so I'll try and do something about that but yeah it just goes straight into the bumper mount and that's that now the bumper mount I have had to turn upside down let me uh, maybe I could take the cab off right so if I turn that on its side there so you can see the magnets and all I've done is turn this bumper upside this bumper mount upside down so it drops the mounts lower Hard, you won't be able to see it really, it's not really possible, but this uh, the bumper mount is a, is a sort of shallow V, shallow U-shaped, and uh, so you can have the bumper down, or you can flip it round as I did originally, and have it up. So, because the bumper's got to go underneath the cab, I had to drop, effectively drop its mounting position. So I've lost a little bit of ground clearance, but uh, you know, not, not too much. Oh, if you notice the wheels are loose, that's just because I haven't bolted them on firmly. You know, no point if you're going to take them off again, right? Uh, and the uh, the blue nut is is temporary. There are wheel hubs to go on the sides. Now at the back, that's a much more uh, sort of interesting proposition because I haven't seen these bumpers. I haven't been looking for them. It's fair to say. But what have I got here? So at the back, I have got a tubular arrangement, and it sits. It's not on straight, should I say? I mean, I'll, I'll just bend it down, so that would be its its more normal kind of resting position, more normal resting angle, and it mounts into the again the uh, TRX4 bumper mount holes. So you just bolt through. Now, it's a nice tubular thing. It's got a V shape to it, but what I really liked about it was that it didn't interfere with the back end of the box. Uh, as you can uh, once you put the box back on and you'll see what I mean now. I do have to tilt it up slightly Okay, I do tilt it up slightly so that it sits at a slightly jaunty angle and If I then put the box on You can see how it doesn't interfere. It, it sits underneath the box underneath the step and the and the sort of light bar here and It just as I say it, in the previous video. I wanted to stop dismounting from a rock or something and it's smashing into the bottom of the box raising the box up, destroying all this so it's a kind of protective measure it's not really a cosmetic thing it's quite unobtrusive under there and uh, I, th I think that the truck will look all the better for it you know it's quite unobtrusive not very obvious to see um, but it is there doing the job so that's pretty cool and as I said you've got the, the side the side uh, the side rails on which you can see here and uh, and there okay so they're not I have yet to drill a hole in the chassis so they do still rotate uh, when they're only on one bolt at the moment so I need to drill the holes in the chassis but I'm a bit of a girl's blouse about that at the present what have I done to the car well I don't know whether you'll be able to tell or not maybe not but there is a kind of emergency stop button I think it is on the bonnet on a Unimog emergency you know push here button well, it is on this one, so I've made one. And the exhaust was the, uh, the the main attraction for tonight. So the exhaust, as I said, is a metal straw. I showed you last episode. That's just a metal straw available in um, one of our discount supermarkets here, Aldi. And I cut the size, 
cut, nice slash cut on the angle there. It's on the stock mount and it's on the stock lower. I've cut the stock exhaust around here. So this is this is the stock exhaust that runs off behind the, the, the doorstep, which will sit here. I've browned some tissue paper around each of the joints, just to, uh, and then I painted it green like a heat, as if it's a heat wrap kind of, you know, muffling tape, something like that. To uh, anyway, that's what I've had to do because it was a messy joint, and the exhaust, the straw is far too thin for the stock amount up here, so it's rattling about like a wizard's sleeve. So. They've had to be uh, padded out and disguised equally and painted green just so you can kind of make a bit of a feature of it. And it's got a piece of mesh from the Cross HC6, the uh, like the juice and a half um, 6x6 they do. This is uh, from their exhaust set. It comes with a nice bit of mesh. It's not long enough really, I think, for realism's sake. Uh, I think uh, it would be longer than this, but you know. This certainly, this will do. It's it's near the door. The idea is, you, you know, it keeps people from bumming into the roasting hot exhaust when they're getting in and out. Uh, I think that would be the point of it. But I, I, in reality, it would be a lot longer. But I don't have a longer piece of mesh, so I've custom fit that. Some um, styrene uh, ends put round the exhaust, and then measured, trimmed away, so the exhaust, so the mesh uh, fits onto them, and then super glued in place, and uh, <clears throat> painted black. So that's pretty much that. Um, I have also test fitted the lights, and so I'm I'm, I'm kind of set now. It's just just going to have headlights and tail lights, and it's going to have two blue beacons on the box. Uh, it's an ambulance. I don't think it's going to have too many uh, fancy racks of spotlights and so on. It does come with a big rack of five spotlights. So God only knows why you would ever put that on uh, on an ambulance anyway. But it might be used elsewhere, of course. Now, the, uh, you might remember as well, probably the, uh, the, one of the next things I'm going to do will be to uh, mount the battery box uh, in here, in the, in the box. It's going to go in there uh, so I can change the battery uh, via this door. There's some sort of coffin arrangement in there, very appropriate, I think, maybe for an ambulance. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you guys was just arrived, it's just arrived today, just tonight. Walked in and there it was on the mat, which is great. I only ordered this three or four days ago. UK seller, this is what I would like to see. The stickers done, not bitter at all. This is a set of aluminium under body, <laughs> under, bo under body skid plates. <laughs> I'm sure there's a gag in there somewhere, but I'm not prepared to make it. Now, the really, the, the one thing I wanted. Uh, was uh, none of that stuff it was just one of these which is basically the bash plate to go under here and protect it attaches to the chassis and it sort of protects the steering link which is obviously under there yeah so it, it sits under there bolts to the chassis and it just gives it a little bit of protection um, on approaches and things yeah and it looks pretty hench as well and hides a bit more of the RC-ness of the chassis, which is a good thing, I think. So, yeah, I've got one of these on the uh, 10 2. It works a charm, works a treat. But in the bag, I, th I wasn't sure when, for, for you know, whatever it was, eight quid or something, I thought it was just the one piece, you know, and you have to pick which one you want. Uh, it turns out it's all of them. So, not only have I got one for the front, I've also got one for the back. I'm not entirely sure which is which one's got slightly longer mounts on it than the other. Um, so I've got one for the front and one for the back. I have got two diff covers which are re again on the 10-2 because it's got uh, boom racing fat 44s. They come with uh, skid plates and they are really helpful. I was a bit wary because they obviously drop ground clearance a little bit on your pumpkins but they make it so much easier for the pumpkin to, to, to slide over things. So uh, and especially these being plastic, you know, the plastic digs in a little bit, I think. The nylon digs in to rocks sometimes. And uh, it's got a few, uh, you know, raised edges to it and so on. So even though I'll lose a little bit of clearance, I think adding, adding this on really does help it just slide over things. Or slide off them, obviously, and then the truck rolls over and destroys itself. So, but your axles will be fine. So take a lesson, kids. And also, there's this thing, which I think is a chassis, a, a mid plate, um, huge big skid plate, I think it goes right into the middle, under the gearbox, 
and uh, you know yeah I mean that's pretty cool it's all that's pretty good stuff so excuse me that'll all be added, added on as well next time you see it now how much it all weighs yeah, about that much so a little bit of weight added to the chassis is always a good thing as well especially given the big wobbly box on top so there you go that's pretty nice and exciting isn't it so it's rock proof it's wheels proof that's what I'm trying to do with this wheels proof the thing all right so there you go that's that's about all I've got to say on the subject mm, there you go so enjoy yourselves stay lucky always wear a condom mm, there you go always wear a condom well not always obviously can't believe I just said that I think I'll cut that out so yeah stay lucky and uh, you know don't punch a gypsy and be kind to cats. Right. How's that? Alright, bye.